If your entire world was suddenly destroyed by horrifying godlike creatures, what would you do? Everyone you love is dying and no one can save you. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the Titans in Attack on Titan. This kid is about to lose everything, and this town has no idea that everyone is about to be eaten by horrifying flesh-eating monsters. Eren here is a small town kid growing up inside the walled city district of Shiganshina, with these massive walls designed to protect humanity from the terrifying threats that lurk right outside, known as the Titans. Eren and his childhood friend Mikasa finish up collecting wood and head back home, but then they encounter a group of city guards. A branch of the city's military tasked with the defense of the city walls. However, they're all drunk on the job, and this angers Eren, who demands that they stand guard and do what they're paid for, protect the city from the horrifying titans who could show up at any moment to kill everyone. The guards, however, laugh at the two kids, saying that there hasn't been an attack on any city in over a hundred years, so they can chill out. But these guards don't realize that Eren's fears are about to come true. It's only a matter of time before humanity's worst threat comes back for blood. Okay, first off, these guards are idiots. These titans have been stalking the earth and this city for over a hundred years. Humanity is living in a bubble that can burst at any moment. Walling ourselves off is only putting a band-aid over two gigantic problems and one of those is right outside of the walls and the second is within. Starvation. By walling off humanity, we've created a food problem. Pushing off and delaying the massive titan threat is going to lead to them becoming greater in numbers until eventually, and probably already have, the titans outnumber humans. This choice humanity has made is going to lead down a series of events that will result in the death of hundreds, if not thousands, of innocent people. As far as we know right now, the titans look like humans, which might lead us to believe that they reproduce in the exact same way. However, since there haven't been any sightings of titan babies, and the titans don't seem to have any male or female organs, there might be some other way they're reproducing that we're not aware of. However, regardless of the traits unique to the titans, the physiology is extremely similar, meaning the same physiological principles should apply to them regardless of size. Either way, our main goal is to destroy every last titan, so that way there's no possibility they'll ever come back. It's easier said than done, but at least we know that it's a possibility. As far as we know now, the titans aren't capable of critical thinking, meaning that they lack the ability to properly assess a situation like a human would. The most important way of beating a creature much bigger and stronger than you is to understand both its strengths and weaknesses. This should come in handy in the near future, and it's going to provide a lot of opportunities opportunities to outsmart the creatures when needed. And speaking of outsmarting creatures, I would begin to invest time and money into research and development for aircraft vehicles. This is going to grant us the ability of aerial reconnaissance. Now, the 3D maneuver gear is a great way to traverse the city, but outside, it's completely useless unless you're surrounded by trees. Not only that, the gear can only take you so far into the air, while an airplane or dare I say a balloon should be able to propel you far enough into the air that the Titans can't attack you. The time between Titan attacks was around 100 years, and based on the clothing and overall appearance of the city, it resembles something close to early 1900s Germany. So in theory, the engineers that live in the city should be advanced enough to have come up with something similar, if not exactly the same as the first plane to ever be made. It would allow the city to check for the incoming threat of Titans, and allow the guards of the city to either lure the Titans away from the city, or attack them head on outside of the city walls. That's when they get word that the city's most skilled warriors, the Scout Regiment, is back from their Titan hunt. Eren drags Mikasa to see his beloved heroes come back, but they quickly realize that being a hero is costly. Expecting something out of a fairy tale, he instead sees the men and women of the Scout Regiment broken, bruised, and heavily traumatized by their journey outside of the walls. Back at home, Eren speaks about how he wants to grow up to slay Titans, but his mom thinks otherwise. She gets mad at him for even suggesting the idea. Eren's dad then gets up to leave for work, but not before he reveals a key to a secret basement and tells Eren that when he gets back, he'll show him what's down there. But Eren has no idea the insanity that awaits him down in that basement. Later on, Eren sits with Mikasa and his best friend Armin, dreaming of a life beyond these walls and what adventures await him beyond this town. And that's when their lives change forever. Suddenly, the whole town hears it. 
a flash and rumble hits over the city walls. Everybody goes to check it out and realizes something is terribly wrong. They have no idea that they're about to witness the most horrifying thing that they've ever seen before, a sight that nobody has seen in over a hundred years. A ginormous hand reaches over the walls. It's a titan, and it blasts through the city walls, reigniting storms and hellfire upon everybody in Shiganshina City. This 60-foot titan is an unstoppable force. It tears through the walled gates, unleashing an army of smaller titans right behind it. Citizens begin dying left and right. Men, women, and children are wiped out in seconds. No one is safe from these bloodthirsty titans as chaos reigns in the city. Eren looks on in horror as he sees his house destroyed at the feet of the titans. He rushes to check on his mother and finds her trapped in the rubble. But at that moment, a titan spots them and begins to make its way towards them. Eren is about to be crushed along with his mother until suddenly a familiar face shows up. This blonde guy who is ordered by the mother to save her children and leave her behind. Looking at his mother's sweet face one last time, Eren and Mikasa are dragged from their homes as this blonde guy carries them away. Helpless, Eren can do nothing but look in horror as his mother is picked up and is devoured by the titan. Okay, if I was Eren right now, I would be shitting my pants. After hearing about titans for a hundred years, learning about them in school, and fearing their arrival, that day has finally come. Now, the first thing to do would be to start running for cover. We don't know much about the titans, but what we do know is that if we're targeted by any of them, it's game over. Also, the massive amounts of flying debris caused by the titans is going to be something we need to be extremely careful for. We need to treat this like a real-life survival situation if we're going to make it out of here alive. Luckily for us, this city is densely packed, leaving a lot of blind spots where nobody can see us. And while it might seem like a brutal decision, we need to leave our mom behind right where she is, because our house is on an elevated area, meaning that it'll be easier for the Titans to see us there. Either way, her legs are completely crushed, and there's no way that two kids can carry a fully grown adult around, and we can clearly see she's going to need medical attention, which isn't going to be possible with the current situation. Now, even though it might seem like a good idea idea to find where the rest of the citizens went. There's only one emergency entrance out of Shiganshina, which means everyone will be running towards the same direction, which would increase our chances of being spotted by the Titans. I would say that's a bad plan. It would be a good idea to carefully make our way into a house near the walls of Shiganshina and stay there for the time being. Everybody's already rushed out of their houses, meaning there should be enough food and resources for us to sustain ourselves for at least a few days until we can wait it out. As far as we know, the Titans are simple-minded creatures meaning they'll likely walk out of the city if they don't manage to find any humans for an extended period of time. And also, they're far too big to easily take a sneak peek into any of the houses, or dare I say, even the basement of the houses. So we'll be safe there for the time being. Countless citizens flee to the escape boats that lay nearby, as Eren and Mikasa join them, sailing away further deep into human territory. But back at the gate, it's a bloodbath. Blonde guy here stands with the other soldiers, who do their best to contain the damage. They fire the the cannons everywhere, and the titans slowly overpower the humans' limited technology, making a mockery of it, causing some of the guards to panic and flee their post, and sprint to the next gate to shut it for good. Because these soldiers know what we're thinking, that if they don't get inside the next wall, if they don't close this gate, they will all die. But that's when they see it, the feet of another massive muscle-bound titan who begins charging directly at the gate with full force. No man-made weapon can stop the titan, and so the guards run for their lives as it blasts through the gate. Nothing can stop this. Okay, if we've been forced into tiny walled-off cities due to gigantic creatures roaming right outside of our doorstep, we should be well prepared to take them head-on with the tools at our disposal. Now, everyone in this city knows that this day was going to come sooner or later. Even though the walls are pretty high, it's only a band-aid option to the outside threat. Because if even one titan spots evidence of human life around the walls, it's all over. However, not a single person in the city was prepared for this moment, which is about to get hundreds, if not thousands of people killed. Now, this would require some prior thinking, but hear me out. The city's designers should have built the city in a way that wasn't so obvious from the outside. Even though we don't know exactly how the creatures think, if I was a titan roaming the wilderness, then I might have done a double take seeing a massive concrete wall bigger than myself. We clearly know that there are basements built in the city, because Eren's house already has one. In a way, the city government should have prepared for this by making it so every single house in the city has some sort of 
underground basement or bunker. However, it's not a foolproof idea, especially if your house is trampled on by a titan. You might have some issues getting out of the basement with all of the debris blocking the way out, but either way, being stuck underground is better than being dead. While this might not be the easiest situation to deal with, the first thing the city guard should have done would have been to keep the titans from getting past the city walls. Considering that all of humanity as we know it is contained within this little city, they should have probably tried to avoid having any of it destroyed, since it likely took decades of logistical work to get it up and running, and the resources of the land around them can't sustain them forever. As the hours pass, news of the fall of Shiganshina on the south side of Wall Maria reaches all the other territories. After 100 years, the Titans have finally begun to attack mankind once again. And within that year, all of humanity is forced to withdraw behind the second wall, Wall Rose. Thousands lay dead, and Eren is devastated from the traumatic events that just happened. Infused with rage, he then vows to destroy the monsters who took his mother from him, the Titans themselves. So with his budding relationship with Armin and the watchful Mikasa, they joined the Cadet Corps training school in order to one day rid the world of this Titan threat. Over the next three years, Eren, Armin, and Mikasa train like their lives depend on it. And as the months pass, the three are tested to their limits, learning the true nature of what it takes to become humanity's greatest weapon against the Titans, as Eren learns that he's pretty bad at everything, but is helped to suck a little bit less by his close friend, badass Annie Leonhardt, who knows a little bit more about combat than all the other recruits, who try their best to get through their hellish training. Eren and his crew find out that not many people have first-hand experience of seeing what the Titans are capable of. Hell, some of them have just joined up to look cool. Most of them have no idea of what horrors await them in the coming days, months, and years, except for an unlucky few. The group finds out that most of the kids here are really here just for show, to live up to society's expectations, with little idea of what is really going on. Some signed up to simply join the easiest and safest branch of them all, the military police, where they are tasked with doing little other than guarding the king himself. This is what humanity is counting on, these kiddos? Humanity right now is doing a terrible job of preparing these kids for what's to come. Doing basic fitness tests is a good way to tell if they're physically tough enough to handle a titan threat, but preparing them mentally is a whole other challenge. Only a few years earlier, the titans came through and destroyed half of the city, and it's going to happen again very soon. While making sure the recruits are safe, this is going to lead them to a false sense of security that won't last forever. It's important to note that the army makes sure that the kids know what's coming, and the best way to do that is to show them the threat that they're dealing with head on. If I were working for the army in this city, I would propose that every student form a group at the end of their training for one final test. Witness a titan in the flesh. This may be extreme, I know, but it's this kind of rigorous training that would benefit the rest of the army the most and show these kids what these monsters truly are. This would instill fear into the recruits and make sure that they're never lazing around on the job, unlike these guys getting drunk and playing games. In addition, it might be helpful to teach every citizen in the city how to act when an emergency situation arises. A mandatory military conscription would be a good way to harden the citizens up to the harsh realities of the world they're in. Many countries in the world, like South Korea and Singapore, promote this very same idea to keep their citizens ready in time of war. This also might include familiarizing every single person with the omnidirectional gear, since that's the only known method of slaying a titan. There's strength in numbers, and the city needs all the strength it can get. The cadets finally graduate and are given the options of joining three different military branches. The garrison regiment, tasked with reinforcing the walls and protecting the city. The military police regiment, which serves to protect the king and maintain order. And finally, the most dangerous group of all, the scout regiment, which are tasked with surveying the dangerous titan territories outside of the city and one where lives are routinely lost. Knowing the fate of the world rests mainly upon one group, Eren, Mikasa, and Armin decide to join the scout regiment. The group begins their daily life as humanity's top defenders, and for a while, everything seems like it's going to be okay, but nothing lasts forever. And on one fateful day, the horrors return yet again. Suddenly, a lightning strike erupts in front of the Trost Gate, bringing with it another titan right in front of Eren himself. A massive explosion erupts in front of the scout regiment, sending tons of young soldiers to their death in seconds. Eren holds on with his grappling hook for his sweet life, as he and everyone else sees now the gaping hole right within the giant wall itself. The titan invasion is happening again. The massive titan bats the wall-mounted cannons away in one swift 
motion, forcing everyone to head for the gate entrance. But something is up, and Aaron notices that this titan went for their defenses immediately, and knew which part of the wall to hit. These monsters are intelligent. Aaron goes on the offensive and rides up the massive monolith of a titan and tries to kill it at its weak spot. But suddenly, the titan disappears, and now the city must seal off the entrance before more smaller titans get in. The city prepares for another attack as everyone runs inward through the next gate and the city forces put up defenses and lie in wait. Because if the titans get through this route, it'll be just like what happened before. They must hold off the titans and they need to seal off that 8 meter hole if they don't all want to die right here and now. Humanity begins to arm itself and readies for the incoming fight as chaos reigns throughout the streets. Right at the very heart of humanity lies the king and this military general and badass, Bald Guy. They then receive word that the trost wall has been broken into, so Bald Guy, like the stud that he is, prepares to go help his men, but the king forbids him to leave, arguing instead to stay here to protect the royal castle, with the king not giving one shit how many people die for him. But Bald Guy is a bald stud and ignores the king himself and goes to ready himself for the bloodiest battle his generation will ever face. Back within the trost district at the inner second wall, Wall Rose, Eren and his regiment are given the orders by the garrison regiment for battle plans to help save the city, because all the advanced teams at this moment have been wiped out, which means Eren and his group must hold their ground against the fiercest beasts this world has ever known, the Titans, because if they don't do it, then no one will. Okay, here we go again. Now, all that training that the recruits didn't do is about to come back full circle. However, it's too late now to go back into the past and train everyone properly, so we have to make use of what we have right now. The first thing we need to accept is that people are probably going to die, but as long as it isn't us, it's okay. With the group that we have right now, it's in our best interest to take the Titans on one by one, because splitting the teams up is only going to make it harder for us to take out the Titans, and in doing so, it's going to increase the amount of time that the Titans have to wreck the city and eat innocent civilians. The best way to deal with them is to isolate them first and make sure the Titans don't surround us. They're absolutely gigantic, so as long as we keep our heads about us, it shouldn't be too hard to avoid any surprise attacks. And, due to the Titans' limited cognitive abilities, we should be able to get an edge on them by using multiple people to distract them while someone else aims for the back of the neck. Because while these Titans look like slow-moving creatures, they seem to have the ability to defy the laws of physics, moving much faster than any creature that size should be able to. This means not only are they extremely dangerous, but they're extremely unpredictable as well. For us, we need to reduce that unpredictability as much as possible. Eren and Armin wait for the Titans to reach their location as they talk about defeating the Titans right here and now, and shooting up to the very top of their ranks within the regiment. But Eren has no idea just how difficult that is going to be. The rest of Eren and Armin's squad, Group 34, shows up just as they see the incoming Titans. Let the battle begin. The gang then charges forward, hurtling through the sky and heading straight towards the Titan. But suddenly, another Titan flies up right in front of them and catches one of Eren's teammates in his mouth. And it swallows him right in front of all of Eren's friends. The horrified gang is frozen in shock as they watch their friend, classmate, and squad member die right in front of them. This enrages Eren, who charges forward at that very same Titan, hurtling through the sky until, snap, a Titan bites his leg off, causing him to crash on a nearby roof. Armin does nothing but watches in pure terror as all of his squad mates are picked off one by one by the Titans. It's a bloodbath but he's too paralyzed with fear to move a muscle. And just then, another nearby Titan picks up a petrified Armin and is ready to devour him whole. But Eren quickly gets up the last bit of his strength and saves him, pulling him out and away from the mouth of the Titan, holding the Titan's mouth open until the Titan clamps his mouth shut. This went way worse than we could have possibly imagined, and this group messed up big time. Not to put the blame on one person, but Eren royally screwed up this time around. He got too emotional, and that was his biggest mistake. This guy had it out for the Titans since day one, and why wouldn't he? They killed his mom right in front of him and destroyed his childhood home. It makes me wonder though, similar to joining the military, I wonder if the Cadet Corps has any sort of psychiatric requirement for entry, because his disdain for these monsters while handy is what caused his downfall. Not addressing emotional wounds from a traumatic past in most cases will almost always get worse over time, and frankly, I'm surprised that Eren hasn't resorted to coping with alcoholism or food at this point. Seeing his fellow teammate get 
get eaten was the last straw for him, and this is what ultimately caused him to lash out in rage and ignore the group dynamic and make a plan that could have prevented him and all of his teammates from getting eaten to begin with. And I cannot emphasize how much he screwed up, but this little incident is going to be the best and worst mistake he's ever made. Armin, the only survivor of Squad 34, snaps out of his day state and runs off, unsure of himself and the rest of the world's fate because it's not looking good, as people and members of the regiment try and escape with fear and uncertainty leading the way, just as they see this one titan come straight for them. But luckily for them, more regiment members along with Mikasa come and cut the titan down, forcing its corpse to crash right in front of the terrified citizens. The public finally gets a leg up on the evacuation, and all the regiments are forced to retreat. But Mikasa opts to help out more of the trapped soldiers in the nearby buildings, crawling with titans. But on the way there, they encounter soldiers who have run out of jumping gas for their gear, thanks to the supply soldiers within the headquarters being too scared to do their job. This means that the rest of the soldiers outside can't scale the wall to retreat, which means they're sitting ducks, and it's only a matter of time until more titans find them. But this one cadet ain't taking no shit at what life throws at him, and with few other options, demands that they attack the headquarters, so they can resupply themselves with more gas at once. And Mikasa joins in and convinces the squad that they can do it and also spots a sullen Armin, who sits nearby defeated. And then Mikasa learns that Eren and the entirety of the 34th Squadron has been wiped out, causing her to reel back in shock. Her only family left is dead. Mikasa quickly recovers and states that she will retake the headquarters with them or without them, and everyone is shocked with how callous and cold Mikasa is. Mikasa and the group sets off with what little gas they have left and goes flying across the sky, and Armin notices that Mikasa is going too fast and burning through her gas too much. And he realizes something. She misses Eren and is letting her emotions guide her decisions. But suddenly, Mikasa drops out of the sky, hitting the rooftop with a bone-crunching thud. She contemplates giving up right then and there, and with the titans on her tail, is about to get eaten until another titan comes in swinging, beating this other titan senseless, and not trying to attack her. Armin just then arrives in the nick of time and picks up Mikasa, but Mikasa can't believe what she's seeing. A titan fighting another titan, using human-like movements to defeat this other monster. Holy shit, this is insane. We're used to seeing these monsters fighting, but we have to be scrupulous enough to always pay attention to the little things. I want to point something out. Most titans fight like that of some animal with lower intelligence, fighting like wild animals, swinging their arms and using their teeth to bite as a form of offense. But this titan fights like someone with a higher IQ. He isn't swinging his arms, is what I'm saying. So Mikasa and her group need to calm down and get to the bottom of this. Because whatever this new kind of titan is, all we know right now is that it's absolutely terrifying. Mikasa and Armin sit in shock, but have little time to react. As the other soldiers say, they need to get to the supply headquarters now, but Mikasa is out of gas. Armin then gives Mikasa his equipment and has an idea. If they take out the nearby titans, they can then lead this seemingly human-like titan that they've just discovered to the supply headquarters. The gang agrees and heads out, killing the other nearby titans and aiding this one, and leading it to the supply HQ as more and more regiment members are killed. They finally reach the headquarters as the other members hear from Mikasa that they have an ally on their side. This raging titan the group then prepares themselves with weaponry and heads to the titan-filled basement, where all their supplies lie waiting for them. Armin quickly devises a plan, and the soldiers prepare to blind all the titans down there, along with a few extra soldiers to stay up hidden in the scaffolding to surprise attack them. The team then huddles up in the lift and descends down into hell itself, with the platform slowly lowering down until the group finally lays eyes on the titans, luring them in step by step, waiting for the perfect moment until they fire, blinding the titans and allowing the troops from the scaffolding to descend from above and cut them down. The gang then resupplies their gas tanks and prepares themselves for the ensuing fight of a lifetime. The squadron finally begins to ascend the wall and get the hell out of there, but Mikasa remains behind as she and Armin see their mysterious titan ally getting cannibalized by the other titans. She suggests that they save this titan and some other members know better than to pass on this incredible chance of a lifetime to have a titan ally. And they offer to help Mikasa and Armin, but suddenly they see their titan break free free and kill every single other titan in the area, kicking ass and taking names, until it collapses, surrounded by a field of smoke. 
But at that moment, they see the most insane thing ever. A human body breaks free from the back of this titan's neck. It's Eren. Mikasa's eyes bulge wide as she runs to go investigate, seeing a fully formed Eren with all of his limbs intact. Elsewhere, the elite scouting team returns back to a swarm of titans, and they swiftly take them out. But this one guy then mentions that a swarm of titans have begun moving northward towards the main city, forcing the scouts to move. Back within the Tron district, Armin and Mikasa try and help a tired Eren back up to his feet. But they're not out of this shit just yet, because they've just made the biggest mistake of their lives, and it could cost them everything. Suddenly surrounding the group, an entire regiment of soldiers aim and draws their weapons, ready to kill Eren right here and now, thinking he's a titan in disguise. Which means Mikasa and Armin, by helping Eren, have committed an act of treason. Mikasa draws her sword and is ready to kill anyone who tries to kill Eren. Eren pleads to everyone that he's one of the good guys, but no one believes him, and this bearded captain is done listening, so he orders to destroy them right here and now, with a blast from a cannon. At that moment, Mikasa grabs Eren and Armin, and they try to make a run for it, but it's too late. Suddenly, the pull of Mikasa grabbing Eren makes his key flip out in front of his face, unlocking a memory of his dad, telling him that if Walmaria ever goes down, he needs to go find what's hidden in the basement of his house. Eren is shocked to realize that his dad must have drugged him, and that the key is the answer to all of this. Okay, we have no idea just what the hell happened, but if I were Eren, I would try to be as non-confrontational as possible at this very moment. This is a delicate situation, and acting with any kind of aggression or desperation is likely to get us killed. I would tell Mikasa here to stand down and let me represent myself, because there's no way in hell that acting like I did nothing wrong is going to work. From the perspective of the guards, it's only going to make us look like we're a group of undercover titans working together to get this city destroyed. People know that Mikasa and Eren have been friends since they were kids, so of course she would want to come to Eren's rescue no matter what the situation. To avoid looking like a suspicious piece of shit, I would calmly tell the dozens of soldiers pointing their guns that we have no idea just what the hell happened. Honesty is key, and any sign of foul play is going to result in all of our instant demise. Looking at it logically, Eren was swallowed by a titan, meaning that he's definitely not on their side. That Titan was out to kill him, just like any other military force here. However, if he can somehow turn into a Titan, this is monumental. They should be using Eren for their own good, because he was clearly attacking other Titans, which means that at a bare minimum, he still retained a bit of his consciousness while in Titan form. Eren then remembers everything that his dad tried to make him forget, biting his finger and transforming yet again into a Titan. This terrifies everyone, as Beard Guy looks at Eren in shame horror, thinking, who the hell is this guy? Eren wakes up merged with muscle tissue, breaking free from his titan creation. Meanwhile, Armin looks at him in shock. This isn't the Eren that he once knew, this is something else. Eren then jumps down and meets up with the two, remembering his dad and the basement. He's the reason for all of this. Mikasa then focuses on Eren as they figure out a plan to get out of here, but Eren's nose is suddenly bleeding and his face looks pale. Looks like being a titan is taking its toll on him. Eren then tells the two that they shouldn't try and help him, but Mikasa isn't having any of it, and neither is Armin, who steps up and tries to convince the garrison regiment just outside of the fog that he is no threat. But Beard Guy doesn't believe him, and is about to tell the cannons to fire again until Commander Bald Guy stops him, witnessing the finest soldier salute that Armin has ever given. Commander Bald Guy cuts the kids a break, because he believes them. Okay, if I'm going up against all the military branches, it's unlikely unless by some act of God, that we'd be able to convince them that we're not a threat. It may seem counterintuitive, but our safest option was running away if it wasn't for Commander Bald Guy. There's already so much we don't know about the Titans, like where they come from. Hell, we barely know how to kill them. If Eren didn't have Commander Bald Guy, then I would have seriously contemplated bolting the hell out of there, because not even our Titan-turning friend can explain to us how he can turn into a Titan yet. Commander Bald Guy then takes them up on the wall where he hears them out, and even Armin shows he's cut out for soldier's life. By 
offering the best plan that anyone has ever heard. He tells the commander that Eren in Titan form can lift up the big boulders stuck within the town and fill the gaping hole at the wrecked entrance, which can in turn stop all Titans from re-entering, finally reclaiming the Trost district. The commander agrees to go along with this desperate plan, and so does Eren. However, whether he actually has the strength to lift that rock or not is another question. The commander sets the plan in motion, luring away a majority of the Titans to one corner of the wall, while Eren tries to move the giant boulder to the entrance without having to take on any other Titans, and takes alongside him an elite squad of soldiers to accompany him. This is a plan with a terrifyingly high rate of failure, and hundreds of people will die. Everything and everyone relies on this plan. They all rely on Eren. They cannot afford to mess this up. The commander convinces the terrified masses to help on this one last mission, to stop the Titans, to save humanity, and humanity responds to his call and rallies up to try and fight one more time. And so the plan begins, with Eren and his little squad running towards the site of the giant boulder, and Eren finally transforms into his horrifying titan state. But something is not right, because Eren turns around and suddenly tries to kill Mikasa, his best friend. Eren, now in full rage mode, continuously tries to kill Mikasa, and she tries to convince this titan that she's a part of his family. But this glasses guy sees the plan backfire and fires the red flare up into the sky, confirming to everybody that the plan has failed. Mikasa, however, through her cunningness, makes Eren knock himself out, whilst the other group of soldiers now think of a new plan. But they don't have time to think, because two Titans have just been spotted nearby. The group contemplates to leave Eren here, but Mikasa thinks that there's still hope. Back on the other side of the wall, the soldiers see the red flare high up in the sky, and think their Titan plan has failed, forcing Armin to think fast and run off. But Commander Bald Guy here tells the group to hold, because just like Mikasa, he still has faith in Eren. Eren. Back at the side of the boulder, Mikasa convinces the team to believe in Eren, forcing them to keep the Titans busy until they can recover it. But even more Titans begin to show up near Eren, forcing the team to split up and kick some ass. But in the midst of all of this, Armin gets near Eren and tells him the situation. Not getting anywhere, Armin takes out his sword and slices right into where Eren's body is, stabbing his arm and waking him the hell up. And this time, for the better, Eren in his Titan form picks up the boulder and begins walking towards the trust entrance, just as the garrison regiment and the scouts regiment tag team all of these titans circling nearby. It's a bloodbath, but it gets the job done, allowing an exhausted Eren to finally plug the hole and pass out. Armin then comes to get Eren out of his titan body, right as the remaining titans inside the wall try and attack them. But just then, the best of the best comes in swinging to save the day. It's the elite scout regiment, saving the day and helping the humans take out the remaining titans gathered in bunches near the wall, saving Trost for now. Later, Eren wakes up bound and caged, with the scout regiment taking responsibility for him and holding the one thing that could save them all, the key to his father's basement. Okay, hold up. These guys just took the most valuable thing that we have right now. If I was Eren, I would try to convince this guy and the rest of the scout regiment to look more into my father, because it's not that far-fetched to think that my dad, a scientist, might have something to do with my titan abilities. It makes sense, logically, that I was his first human guinea pig, a simple result of his experience experiments. Because at this point, they won't get any more information out of me, since I don't know anything else. They should really save us both some time and look more into the man likely behind all of this, my scientist father himself. But now's not the time for saving the world, because the public then decides that Eren will first have to fight his way in court, to see if he really belongs with the humans or not. But the scout regiment, unlike the rest, wants to use Eren to retake the wall outside of the district of Trost, Wall Maria. But the public doesn't trust Eren even one bit, so the scout regiment gets creative and beats the shit out of him, showing that only the scout regiment can handle a beast of this nature. And so the court agrees to hand him over to the best of the best, the scout regiment who plan to take back Wal Maria by heading back to Eren's hometown, Shigan Shina. Later, on the way there, the gang stops over at an old scout regiment post, where Eren comes face to face with some of the best scouts in the world. And these scouts are not like the rest, because unlike most of society, the scouts think Eren is too valuable to kill, and they need to prove it. Later at dinner, Eren meets a mad scientist, or she might as well be, this glasses girl, who asks Eren for help with her experiments that she's running on two captured titans. 
Titans. Experiments in communication, shielding Titans from sunlight, what makes them less active overall, and finding out that they don't need food or water to survive, nor do they breathe, telling Eren that based on what she found, the only thing that Titans rely on is sunlight. Hey guys, Griffin here, just wanna pop in really quickly. We wanna be able to show you each story in all of its full gory details, but we don't wanna get flagged. We already had another video get flagged, so in order to fix that, we're setting up our very own Patreon account. It's going to be set up very soon, so keep an eye out for updates. Glasses Girl then goes over all of her terrifying theories as to who or what the Titans are, and talks Eren's ear off the whole night, until morning comes and they find out that someone has killed their test subjects. The doctor then loses her shit as they try to figure out which person or group of persons did this. It seems like that there's a traitor in the Scout Regiment. The Scout Regiment then conducts an investigation into who exactly killed these valuable Titan test subjects. As captain of the Scout Squadron, badass Captain Levi grabs Eren and others to join him on a scout mission. Just as another higher up then announces to all the young rookies that the scouts now have open spots to join in their ranks. But while most of the peeps in the 104th Regiment decide to join the scouts, Annie decides to join the military police in spite of all of her other comrades. The higher ups also convince the rookies that they now have a secret weapon to beat the Titans located in the home of Aaron Jaeger's basement. But in order to get there, they need to take back Wal Maria and take out all of the horror terrifying titans that wait for them there. And this thought scares the hell out of the young recruits, and most end up walking away, leaving behind only a brave few willing to take on the worthy cause. Little do all these recruits know that many of them will die soon enough. Over the course of time, the recruits begin training for what will be the most dangerous day of their lives, learning various combat and formation drills until the fateful day arrives, and the scout regiment, including Eren, Armin, and Mikasa roll out to take back Shiganshina district and find the hidden secret hidden within Eren's basement. They cross the plain lush terrain and they carry out their formation, distracting titans left and right, and allowing for the various platoons to advance deeper into enemy territory, until they see one titan headed straight for Armin. But this titan is no ordinary titan, it's something far deadlier, and one with insane intelligence, defeating this scout here with ease, with his eyes locked onto Armin in the distance. It looks to be a a titan just like Eren's, a human titan. The female titan stomps at Armin. On the other side, the titans have broken the scout formation. Many scouts have been eaten or killed. The female titan slowly goes to grab Armin, but instead she only takes off his hood to check him out before running away. Could this be the human traitor? The one who sabotaged the scout's experiments from earlier? Okay, this changes everything. If having Eren turn into a titan wasn't crazy enough, we now know that there's another human-like titan roaming around. This opens the door to a number of possibilities. First, there might be a number of different people that can turn into titans, which is both the scariest and most interesting news that the human race has learned in the past 100 years. If that tells us anything, Eren's transformation wasn't a fluke. He is part of a very special group of humans that has the potential to change the landscape of the world. Now, if I were the scout regiment leader, I'd be less interested in hunting these titans down and more interested in finding out how the hell Eren managed to turn into a titan. And I would wonder if anyone else not only in the group but in the city would be able to pull off the same thing. Just then another scout comes by with a horse for Armin and the duo meet another member while they chase down this female titan. Armin tells them that this monster is part human and part titan and that he thinks her goal isn't to eat people but to find someone since she hasn't eaten anybody that they've seen her kill and so she must be the one who let the titans in when the first wall fell. The team then figures out a new attack plan to distract her from heading towards towards the rear formation to prevent her from finding Eren or wiping out the rest of the squad or both. They need to buy time so everybody can retreat. The team spreads out to cover the female titan from both sides, but this monster catches on quick and swats Armin away like a fly, knocking him off his horse, but he thinks fast and yells out that Eren's been killed, stopping the female titan from killing this guy. But just then, this other scout grapples onto her and flings himself up into the sky until he gets caught, and he breaks out like a Japanese knees Edward Scissorhands and grabs Armin and heads off with this other dude, while the horrifying female titan goes in the other direction, probably straight for Eren. Back near Eren's location, he sees a black smoke signal near him, indicating that there's an abnormal titan nearby, and it's not looking good, as the female titan continues to decimate small 
squadrons of soldiers left and right, brutally killing them all, destroying the formation. The female titan forces the scouts to make a new plan and take up position within this nearby forest to intercept any titans that pass by here, including confronting the human titan herself. They cannot afford to retreat. Just then, Eren's squad enters the forest, but shit's already hit the fan. The human titan is right behind them, horrifyingly eyeing Eren like a predator to its prey, quickly killing all rear reinforcements like they are nothing, forcing Captain Levi and his squad to keep Eren safe and continue pressing on at top speed, despite the horrors of seeing their squad mates die uselessly left and right. Suddenly, a blast of a thousand grappling hooks stopped this titan dead in her tracks, trapping her while Eren and his squad finally managed to get away. The scouts are gonna get a look at whoever's inside of her one way or another. But this titan is a beast, and bests every attempt the scouts make to try and cut out the person hiding inside of her, and it's about to get a whole lot worse. Just then, the female titan lets out a raging roar, calling all the titans in the area being distracted by the scouts to come save her. The female titan forces the regiment to think fast and kill every single creature there, cutting off limbs, heads, and napes of necks. But it's no use. The titans quickly overwhelm the squad and begin to cannibalize the female titan, forcing the regiment to withdraw and return to base. But something is not right, as steam begins to form around the gathering titans, meaning the person inside the titan has a chance to escape. But unlike Eren, the person inside the female titan is able-bodied and more advanced, and she attacks the retreating force killing off scout members near Eren before turning back into another female titan. The squad then tells Eren to go on without them while they take on the female titan. This group of scouts is a cut above the rest and decimate this titan until they don't, because this female titan has some tricks up her sleeve and eventually kills each and every one of the scouts finest, forcing a scared and enraged Eren to swing back and take up the mantle of titan killer again, transforming into the only thing strong enough to kill a titan, another Titan. Eren does everything that he can, but he fails, sadly outmatched, and she chops his titan head off and swallows Eren whole. Mikasa reaches them just in time to see her family get taken away from her again, forcing her to dance with death itself, cutting this titan down to its knees, while Captain Levi swings in and helps Mikasa save Eren from the titan's mouth just in the nick of time before running away and heading back to the main city. The operation has failed, with the scout regiment losing more than just soldiers but losing friends as well, forcing the support of the scout regiment over Eren to collapse, causing him to be handed back over to the capital's custody. But thanks to Armin and this guy's determined scout regiment, they realize who the female titan really is, turning out to be the very same person who killed those titans used for experiments, and the same one who trained with Eren and the 104th Cadet Corpse. The gang knows who the female titan is, and sets out with a plan to trap her inside a nearby tunnel come morning. The next day finally arrives, and they set the plan in motion, with Armin asking his dear old friend within the military police, Annie Leonhardt, if she can help them with Eren's escape, and she eagerly agrees, with this group being led down this eerily empty street, until they reach some stairs leading down to some underground tunnels. But something is not right, as Annie feels something is off, and she realizes that they know that she's the female titan. Annie then readies to bite her finger until a bunch of other people stop her and tie her up, but they're no match for her, as she has a secret ring that has a hidden blade in it, and once more turned into the horrifying female titan. She was onto them from the start. Okay, I love my Attack on Titan crew as much as the next guy, but I need to point something out. We probably should have known that Annie was the female titan by looking at her features, because no one else in the 104th regiment has the same features like she does. And not even that, there were even more telltale signs that she was no ordinary scout. Hindsight is 2020, but the way the female titan looked and moved back in the forest was near identical to Annie. Not only that, the female titan did no harm to Armin even though he was completely helpless. Now this is what I would do. Without telling anyone else in the group, I would take this opportunity to strike as soon as possible. At any moment that she turns her back, we need to take her down and subdue her, and dare I say even kill her. Because if we're fast enough, we could have avoided this city being destroyed once again. And there's too many things that can go wrong. She's way too dangerous to take any chances. The scout should have either tried to capture her or kill her like I would the minute they found out the news. They should have done everything that they could do to make this job easier on themselves, and one of the biggest parts would have been to sedate her in some way, rather than just relying on brute force of a bunch of people trying to capture her. They should have been way more cautious, and should have used 
everything at their disposal to take her down. Armin, Mikasa, and Eren then get trapped in the tunnel, with the female Titan blocking both exits, leaving them trapped with no way out. And to top off the bad news, Eren can't turn into a Titan, choking at the last minute. This forces Mikasa and Armin to act as decoys and split up to confuse the female Titan. But to add even more bad news, Eren gets stepped on by the female Titan, crushing him good and trapping him beneath some rubble. But this isn't over yet, and Armin sure as shit knows it, sneaking over to trap Eren as more and more scouts and fighters scramble to the female Titan's location. But she is unstoppable and knows all of their moves before they make it. If Armin doesn't get Eren to act fast, they're all dead. So Armin, with nothing but his words, breaks through to Eren, allowing Eren to regain his Titan abilities and turning him back into the unstoppable beast that everyone fears. A Titan ready to kill Annie. Eren, now a fully formed Titan killing machine, attacks Annie, the female Titan, with more veracity and madness than ever thought possible, swinging his fist with more raw power than Rocky swinging at raw meat, and smashes Annie down, forcing her to take it up a notch and fight dirty, beating the crap out of Eren, smashing his head in dozens of times, allowing her to run off. But this time, something is different within Eren, and he's lost too many good friends to let their deaths be in vain, forcing something within him to unveil and unleash more fury than ever before. Eren then engulfs his Titan body with flames, lighting up his eyes with an electric blue glow, and runs to chase Annie down. Annie, overwhelmed by Eren's ferocity, proceeds to climb up the wall, allowing her to escape and return to attack again. But Mikasa has other plans, and swings up with vengeance in her eyes, and cuts Annie's fingers clean off, causing her to fall back down hard, and falling into what might as well be hell itself. Eren in Titan form attacks Annie, severing Annie from her Titan body, scooping her out like human ice cream. Eren is either ready to kill her or hand her over. But just then, in a last ditch self-defense effort, Annie encases herself in Diamond Rock, just as Captain Levi comes in swinging to save Eren from his Titan body. Annie is now encased in this diamond shell, and they're unable to pry the secrets that they desperately need to know from her. The city eventually hands off Annie to be under the scout regiment's care, deep underground and Eren gets off the hook, letting him and Annie rest, ensuring that all of their Titan secrets to remain undiscovered for now. But what do you think? Let us know down in the comments below what you like and what you didn't like. Don't forget to subscribe, check out our playlist, and also give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to check out our social media.